Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, last week I made a vase, and I hadn't made a vase for quite a while, and I really enjoyed it, so we're gonna make another one. But with this one, we're gonna try something that I've never tried before. Now, this is a nice piece of cherry, it's a nice log. Uh, it's over two foot long, but we don't need all of it. So we've got a fair amount going on this end with cracks, etc. So I'm gonna take a cutting from this end to work with, because I want what I'm gonna do with it to be the main feature and not necessarily uh, some nice figure in this end. We'll save this side for another project. So to start off, I'll just make a mark on here about 27 centimeters long, which I guess is about uh, just under 11 inches. We'll cut this off, get it on the lathe and get started. Okay, so there we are, all nicely cut and all ready for the lathe. Now this piece, once opened up, it looks pretty clean, no sign of rot or anything like that, so hopefully it won't give us any surprises. Now I'm just going to put a mark on here, which I reckon is roughly the centre. And I'll get it on the lathe. Okay, nice and safely on the lathe. Uh, I'm not quite sure which is going to be the top or the bottom yet. So we're gonna get this round uh, using the three quarter inch spindle roofing gouge. This one has the new Pro Comfort handle. Uh, we'll get it round and then make a decision which is the top and which is the bottom. Mask and face shield will be on and we shall start turning at about 900 RPM. face mask on because that was a dusty old thing. Right, we've just about got this round. There's still a few bits that we need to take care of, but that's certainly good enough for now. Now, which is going to be the top and which is going to be the bottom? We've got a, a split on here and a split on there. That's only around that knot, so that's not very deep at all. So that's the main thing on and not there. Right, so those are the two things we have to consider when we're deciding between the top and the bottom. Now, this split seems to go in about half an inch, so that's nothing particularly severe. That's nothing really to worry about. So just that. Uh, I think in balance, I think this is going to be the bottom. The majority of decent wood is at the top and vases generally go in towards the top, so hopefully whatever's underneath there is either gonna produce some beautiful grain or will disappear entirely. Right, so I'm gonna mark out for putting a tenon on here. We'll get that cut and then we'll put this in some jaws. safely in the jaws. Now I've just spent a, a few minutes to think about what would be the best shape for this vase given what I'm going to do to it. We'll get into that a little bit later on but at the moment I want to produce something with some reasonably flat sides but I also want this to be a bud vase so it's going to need a narrow top. So I think we're going to have to have something which gently curves out from the bottom into a nice shoulder and then up to the top. Something like that. That's my initial thoughts. We're not gonna drill the hole yet for the vase, uh, but I just want to get kind of a shape ready first so I have a, a, a better idea of what I'm doing. Okay, we're swapping over to the half inch bowl gouge and we're gonna be turning at about 1100 RPM.
that's the neck pretty much started. Uh, does have to go in a little bit more yet. The hole we're going to bore in is going to be about 12 millimeters, so which is roughly the thickness of our uh, live spur here. So it does need to come in a little bit more, probably closer to that rim we've got there. Uh, this is one of the issues we talked about earlier on. Uh, it is loose, so I'm not quite sure. Oh, okay, all right, it's very loose. So now we've got a hole, so we might have to think about that. Uh, the shoulder is nearly where we wanted it to be in terms of distance down the vessel. So if I go down to this point here, I might get rid of a lot of that. And by the time we've got this down, hopefully that will all disappear, just leaving some nice grain around it. So let's just hope for that one. Uh, once I've got this finalized, then I can start putting this curve in here down towards the base. It could be a gentle one because it's the sides where the action is going to happen in a little while. I think the next step, I'll just take this down a little bit so we can see what's going to happen there. Okay, it doesn't look terrible, uh, so I think the best thing to do for now is just completely and utterly ignore it and see where it is when we're done. Now, I've got a bit of worm damage there, but again I think we'll just ignore that for now. Uh, right, to see how this shape balances with the rest of the, the bottom of the bars, I'm just going to start putting this curve in now and just see how it sits together uh, to make sure that proportions are appropriate for this size. They're very rough and craggy. Okay, more worm damage. I'll to try and get below that if possible. Okay, but that's the basic shape. Uh, very roughed in at the moment. I think I'm going to have to thin this hole down a little bit. Just see if I can get below this worm damage. I really didn't want that. Okay. Still got a little bit left but we've got another one starting there around that knot so this may be a case of that we could chase them all day long and they could be the, all the way through this piece so right we'll not press the issue too much at the moment so anyway let's get this neck down to the right diameter check that the balance is all right and then put our hole in
Okay, I had to make the neck a little bit longer because I've got a catch on the edge there. So that was why the heavier last cut. But uh, the advantage it's given us is that really looks nice now. Right, so I think we're almost at the point where we can start doing something different. But before I do, I just want to try and get this side a little bit straighter, I think, as opposed to it being a slight curve. Well, it kind of goes two different directions here, it's not particularly brilliant. But I think this needs to be one complete straight line from there to there. Pretty much happy with that. We are going to sand in a second, but before we do that, I'm going to put this hole in. Sending away beautifully, and now is the bit where I have to do what I said I was going to do, which I've never done before, and now I'm nervous. Uh, what I'm wanting to do is to uh, hand carve a texture on the side of this piece. Uh, a few years ago, a good friend of mine, uh, a retired carpenter, gave me all of his old tools, which included an awful lot of hand gouges things like this. This is uh, an Ashley Isles number 11 gouge. And it's always been my ambition to have a go at carving. <laughs> and now it's gonna happen. So working with the grain, which is heading that way, I'm just purely going to work in patterns going along the length of the sides. Uh, I'll do a small area first see how I feel about it, and then if it's all going well, then we'll cover the whole piece. I'm not quite sure exactly how long this is going to take, but uh, I think we'll wait to find out. Okay, before we do start, I must say that although I have never done this before, uh, if I am messing up, I will get my gouge-shaped rubber clear off the surface and start again. Okay, there's no time constraints on this, so... Uh, Let's just see how we get on. <laughs> Nervous. Right. One done. Lighter pressure, smoother strokes. Okay, rather than going right up to the top, I think I will try and vary the height just to give it a little bit of interest. Okay, right, let's carry on.
Okay, so far so good. A few observations. Uh, lighter touches seem to be better. It's very easy to let the gouge get too deep in the wood. And then, a bit like on that one there, it's a little bit rough, so you've just got to go in and just lightly go over it again just to help smooth it out. Uh, also, the lighting in here may be great for filming bowls. It's lousy for this because it's too flat. Uh, I've just turned this piece slightly to the side to try and create more of a shadow so I can see it easier. I might have to turn it a little bit more. I'm going to have to move a couple of the cameras around just to so hopefully you can get a better, better look at this. Just trying to put different angles on the tail ends of these cuts so it doesn't feel too uniform. So I'm just laughing at myself. It's like I know what I'm doing. I have really not a clue. Okay, I said I'm gonna put like a line around the top or it won't go beyond. I think I'll do the same on the bottom as well. Not necessarily to save myself time, but I think only having it in the middle may ultimately look nicer. Yeah. Ah, well done, I think. Well, there we go. What do you think? The uh, worm holes that was there, I faded them into with some cuts. The one that was here, 
this seemed to open up an enormous hole inside, so we'll we'll kind of ignore that one. Now I'm just going to quickly get a bit of uh, fine sandpaper and just take off these red lines which I've drawn on, and then we're going to try something else. <laughs> If you know that uh, oak can be darkened using an ebonizing solution because of all the tannins in the wood. Now, cherry is exactly the same. Uh, and I've got some ebonizing solution here made by Goodwoods. This is the gentleman who's been working with me to develop the brace of pastes. And uh, I haven't done this for a, a, probably a good year. So I'm gonna have a go on this. This is a two part solution. What I hope is going to happen is that it will darken it, but where the where we've cut out areas, it looks subtly different in those, to making it slightly more obvious and slightly more rustic, I guess. It's certainly working. So that's part one on. So now, as per instructions, we're going to go straight on with part two. Okay, right, we're going to let this dry, and then I have another evil plan. Okay, I've given this overnight to dry, and I am absolutely over the moon with the way the ebonizing fluid has worked it's completely transformed this piece right but it has left a bit of a dull finish uh, it needs de-nibbing so i've just got a, a high grit uh, scotch pad on the end of my drill i'll just spin this up and just go over the surface <laughs> happy with this so far there's just one more step which I think will hopefully bring this piece to life I'm going to go over it with a silver embellishing wax now it is my hope that this silver will stick more into these engraving marks than the rest just hopefully making it more distinct more unusual See when I'm putting it on, it's sitting quite heavily inside some of these grooves. So I will have to get a, some sort of buffing wheel on it to clear out some of those. But I think you'll agree, it is starting to look quite nice. Okay, I'm going to rub this in with it spinning, holding the cloth against it, uh, and then we'll see what it needs to take out some of the wax from the deep inside the grooves. <laughs> I love the way that looks, but we do have to remove some of the wax from inside these holes. It's a shame because I really like that. Okay, I'll give this soft pad a go first. I've just locked it off so it won't rotate. I'm just gonna work over the surface into different areas, rotate it a bit more, and then carry on until it's done. Yeah, that worked. Amazing. Right, I'm gonna carry on with this, and I shall bring you back when it's all done, and we shall take a look at the finished piece. A hand carved and ebonized cherry bud vase. This was so much fun. 
it's always nerve-wracking at the start when you're trying something completely new, something you've never done before. But as soon as you've made that first cut, and you start to relax a little bit, and then start to enjoy the process. It's just that initial first cut that gets us all. If we never make that first cut, then how are we ever gonna know what we're able to do? Now, I made the decision when I was doing it to make different angles on these cuts. And it, although it, I think it looks good, I've got a feeling that if I cut them all in the same direction, it may have improved the look a little bit. But I'm certainly gonna be experimenting more with this in the future. Another first is ebonizing cherry. I've never tried it before. I knew it was possible, because I knew that cherry does have a, a very, very high tannin levels like oak but uh, I wasn't quite expecting it to go this dark. I sent a picture to Dean, the gentleman who makes this ebonizing fluid, and I'll leave a, a link in the description as well, but uh, he was quite surprised as well at how well it worked. Now this vase itself isn't going to be for sale uh, because we're gonna put it into a room we've just decorated that we keep for short-term foster placements. Uh, for those of you who didn't know, uh, my wife and I are foster carers and we've been doing it for about eight years. Sometimes we get calls uh, to give someone a home just for a few days while things get sorted out. So this is going to go into that room. Now, although that's not for sale, I did promise last week that I was going to be putting some up. Uh, and on eBay right now, we have the Thuya and resin piece we made a few months ago. The Mali Live Edge, again, made a few weeks ago. The Nonagonal Bowl, still a great fun saying that. Uh, this was the one we had enormous struggles with to get completed, but we got there. So that's gonna be online. And the first one we did with the new Milliput. This really is really quite beautiful. This is a, a cherry bowl with a black and metallic milliput inlay. So links will be in the description for these, and if it all goes well, then I'll add hopefully a few more pieces before Christmas. Now, I don't usually sell my work, but due to overwhelming requests, I've decided to put a few up. Right, that's about it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, feel free to hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, and if you leave a comment as well, then you are gonna be entered into the giveaway when we hit 40,000 subscribers, which isn't that far away. Uh, I have managed to secure a few extra prizes as well, and we'll be releasing more details about those in due course. But apart from that, thank you very much indeed for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Thank you.